This is Space Cats Peace Turtles, the unofficial podcast for Fantasy Flight's Twilight Imperium. Episode 47, our first 14-point game. Music by Ben Prunty, featuring Matt Martins and Hunter Donaldson. Episode 14-7, our first 47-point game. (laughs) Episode 14-7, our 45th 7th game. This is the opening of the show. (laughs) This is the opening of the show. This is our 47th 14 game. Episode 47, 14-7 games. game. Uh, We are so tired. It is 1.30 a.m. 1.30 a.m., yeah. We just finished, not just, we uh, like... 45 an minutes an ago. hour ago, yeah. something like that, finished a live stream of a 14-point game. Our first our one ever. Our first 14-point game. We finally are in the big Episode leagues now. 47, Episode 47. Our 40, first 14-point no. game. That's enough. Uh Oh, my gosh. Hunter, are you exhausted? I'm very exhausted. That was emotionally taxing. That was mentally taxing. I um, didn't know it would hurt like this. We, uh, that's the, uh, talk about hashtag salty stream. You mm, know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Hashtag salty stream. Uh, my knuckles hurt. Yeah. So, and my forehead. I was really mean to, <laughs> I was really mean to the guy sitting next to me. Um, and I'm not super proud of what, if you watch the stream of what you're going to see of my behavior. Um, I feel bad. <laughs> And I'm just lucky that all of my outbursts happen behind camera. Right. Uh, and Matt banged his head on the table again. So you're going to want to watch the stream for that. <laughs> I would say we we were both pretty salty. It's yeah. just that Matt has probably the funnier is, way to be is, salty is a funnier way of being Hunter's salty. Sad. <laughs> whereas mine is I, I'm not sad. I'm just mean. I have a mean <laughs> part of me that's mean. <laughs> and I got too uh, sassy. I really did. Hunter, that's the thing. If you ever play with Hunter, I want you to know he is being mean to you, but you, sh- you should laugh him off. Or you should be mean back. Or just be mean right back. Right. Be pre- and if you can't do that, I'm sorry. He's a mean It's really mean hard, person. actually, to... It's really hard because I have... Uh, I'm actually... The thing is, would you say in general, like it, in the regular day, the regular world. I'm pretty nice. Yeah. Like, I'm not like a, a mean nice guy. guy all the time. It's just when you in care Twilight about this Imperium, dumb thing. though, I just care so much. <laughs> and I read people so much. Yeah. It's so much of the you game. You try to mean. predict what they're thinking about you. And then, well, you, you always come away from a game and you're like, I think that person hated me. Right. And it's like, well, they were just playing Twilight Imperium too, Hunter. Right, but I could feel their hate. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I could feel it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I if you want to watch uh, the stream, you should but uh just bear i haven't watched it yet but i bet it's embarrassing for me <laughs> as a human being well as a 28 year old <laughs> human being i think it's probably it's probably not like 14 year old embarrassing yeah yeah but it is probably 28, 28 years old, old embarrassing. Yeah. embarrassing this were a 28 point game yeah and you should be embarrassed too matt you banged your head on the table i punched you my just, hand against just... my cat's scratching post so hard it is bleeding <laughs> i punched so hard like a big strong so really boy. Really not that different. No, it's just I, I take my mine at an individual. <laughs> like I, and I did it to a scratching post. I hit a person with my mind <laughs> over and over, and you physically hit a cat scratching post. <laughs> it's unquestionable which one's better. I'm not saying that we're completely equal. But mine here. hurts myself. If I had more. had a stress ball, that would have been better. Yeah. you know, or a punching bag. Right. Uh, but I did not have that, and yeah, uh, it's uh, bad of me. Well. Let's let's get this out of the way. We categorize this as a, a an episode about the fourteen point game. That means Tech Paths Part Three is getting kicked down the road. We just figured we've done two episodes in a row. We kind of want to take a break, and we just have too much to talk about with yeah, our just, first we talk fourteen about point game. So, We're gonna uh, forget we'll about it by it. the time we want to talk about this again. Right, right. So we got to do this while it's hot on our mind. Exactly. So we're gonna like break down this game as best we can. I wish I'd taken better notes. I'll say that much. So I'm not gonna have like really great specifics to give you. Okay. Well, here's one thing I want to say right now. Sure. And this is, uh, I think, probably a new Space Cats piece turtles policy sure uh i think when we do streams i know you guys probably like to watch both of us play and i feel that somebody needs to run the game yeah somebody needs to run the game like, and run the stream and it and it both those things probably combined. gonna have to either be me or, me or matt um yeah yeah 
somebody's just going to have to have, fulfill that role. Because right. you were you just said right now, oh, I'm so sad I didn't take you know good notes. You're doing a million things. Yeah, already. I was also updating the spreadsheet. Yeah, and updating the spreadsheet, keeping track of turn yeah, order, keeping and... track of turn order. Like we need the thing that I really took away from the Gen Con tournament was having it's a really moderator nice makes it very smooth. Yeah. yeah, it's super smooth. Things with go moderator. faster. Things are better. Will we do that for the holiday stream? I don't know. No, that's no. going to be just a mess. But, <laughs> well, I bet, I bet, I bet one of, I bet Shelton will be willing. Yeah, we'll to we'll do have that. somebody that does. Somebody will be. Willing. Somebody will manage it. Yeah, because because a lot of our friends don't like they don't really care about playing the game. They just like being there. They like hanging you know? out. Yep. Uh, well, let's let's break down some of the parts of the game. Um, sure. Sh- do you want to do this? Per faction, or you want to try to like work through the arc of the game? Like, do you want to start and talk about the early game? I don't know mm-hmm. if I can. I I feel like maybe it's easier to just wor- work through each faction. And yeah, talk I about think if you guys game. want the story of the game, you're kind of gonna have to watch the stream. Yeah, skim through um, it. I which guess. you still can watch on Twitch and what we're probably gonna upload it. To It'll be YouTube. on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. If it's not up on YouTube already when you're listening to this, so it, it my shouldn't... shame will be enshrined. <laughs> Okay. Somebody's gonna dig it up someday, yeah, yeah. and they're gonna be like, "You shouldn't when give you're this guy a for job." Congress, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, I'm trying to be mayor of Portland," and so he's gonna be like, "Look at this guy be mean to this other guy over cardboard and plastic." <laughs> Jesus. Well, uh, what do you do? Let's start. Let's start with. Um, I think it maybe makes the most sense to uh, spoilers from here on out. Oh yeah, of course. So, so we're definitely going to spoil some, some people of it. want to watch the game before they listen to this, and we get it. But we are going to talk about what happened in the game right now. So spoilers from here on out of what happened in that fourteen point live stream. Uh, so there's your fair warning, and let's start it off with the biggest spoiler of all. all uh, Hunter, who won? Uh, Michael, the Nalu, as Nalu. Collective. <laughs> so let, <laughs> his name is Michael. <laughs> Michael won. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what were you looking for there? I'm confused. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the Nalu and what Nalu is like in a 14 point game they're as great. opposed to a they're 10 point game. Better, I think. Holy cow! I think they're better. They're a really good 10 point faction, and this game makes me think that maybe they're the best 14 point uh-huh. faction. Now, here's the thing: uh, our game, we banned six factions before we started playing. We banned Clan Asar, Federation of Soul, yeah. Universities of Jolnar, yeah. Lizix Mindnet. Uh, what was the other one? Hakan, Hakan yep. and Mentak. Yep. So those are the six we banned, and I think those are six factions that we rightly banned because we were afraid of them because they're probably all pretty good in a 14-point game. Right. Probably. Uh, but Nalu is the next one on the list for sure, and it's because Nalu is already just a great faction. And hey, guess what? Neuroglave is a good tech. Do you remember that episode that we did about yeah. Nalu where all I did was talk about how good Neuroglave is? It's wicked good and like a hundred times better. It only gets better in a 14 point game. Yeah, I mean, I would I would say this is the first time I've ever seen it really just raw. Yeah. Like I've seen it, it do like really well, but the like Michael didn't even get it super early, by the way. He, he could have, and he it. messed it up. Like, he goobered his tech. He oh, goob- he messed up. He messed up his early tech path completely, and it oh, still didn't matter. It. I actually yeah. loved it. I yeah. loved what he was doing. Sure. Because I, I don't like it when people rush for something, and then if it feels like they spent too much early on that. Yep. And I just feel like that's, like, an issue sometimes with yeah. people. That's how I feel about my uh, flagship. We'll get into that yeah. later. But, um, but, but Neuroblade. Yeah, you definitely did that with your yeah. flagship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So, yeah. anyways, Neuroglave, he had it probably around five Maybe four, which is not that early. In not a 14 early. Point game. Point. Uh, I mean, that's that's fourteen point. That's that's a little bit under halfway through, and that meant that Nalu has Neuroglave. But here's the thing about Neuroglave that I don't feel like gets enough attention. Yeah. Sure, you're going to lose a fleet supply, but also what is very likely going to happen is you're going to lose a fleet supply, and then Nalu's going to retreat. They're going right. to use foresight. Right. They're going to lose nothing. You're going to send a bunch of stuff, and you are only going to lose a fleet supply and right. kind of like in this situation it was extremely irritating for me because i was necro and all i wanted to do was get some juicy tech and we had two tech objectives so it wasn't just that i'm like an idiot that wants to go for tech it was mm-hmm. like no i if i'm gonna have any chance i have to keep going for these tech objectives and every time i tried to do anything against nalu foresight right uh Mike was really great about always having strategy counters. Like he, he even said this to me at one point. He was like, I, I over I would overspend influence. Like he would spend like a two, three planet if it meant getting another command counter in his strategy pool. Nalu so, is great in that way because they don't really need to build like big 
resource heavy fleet. So no. like if if a Nalu player has like a good influence slice yep. that they can turn consistently into lots of command tokens, they don't even need to win fights. Right. They just need to just get, they just get Neuroglave and then it's such the idea of carving through your pie slice yep. is a nightmare and sometimes literally impossible. Yeah. It was the, impossible for me. Right. Like it, it would literally be like, okay, I'm going to attack here. Okay, he retreats, but now I'm down one fleet pool. Then I attack he again. Gums retreats up the again. works yeah. like nobody's business. It's, it's not even about gumming the works. It's eventually you're not going to have any fleet pool right. anymore. You if you're Laura, no that's fine. If you're the right. Baron of you have no fleet pool, and you well, just that, send two and, ships and around. That is the something that we that we should mention as as a possibility. <laughs> yeah, that, that was we never fun. considered before. Um, Barony took all of their uh, their T- fleet tokens, tokens out of out yeah. fleet pool. And now Neuroglave doesn't technically do anything yeah. to them. <laughs> it was brilliant. It, it was only unfortunate that Barony wasn't adjacent. To, right, like, right. Like, it would have ba- been cool to see She didn't see have that. enough reasons to go over there, really. But every time she did go over there, it was like, well, I get to bring my stuff. I think she would have been a fearsome opponent, yeah, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I don't know what else there is to say besides just like how ridiculous Foresight and Neuroglave are in conjunction with each other. Uh, he won... And in the last round, he had given away his gift of the prescience. He didn't have... He wasn't scoring first. That's the second time we've seen that, by second the Second time we've, we've seen We've seen that. Nalu do that. Now, before. I think that could have backfired, but it just so happened that who he gave gift of the prescience to early on was just someone who their game kind of tanked on them. So right. So, nothing you can do there. But right. but it could... Like, if if it, if that deal had happened with you, Hunter, where, like, you were the one kind of competing for the victory at the yeah, end, that, that would have been, been a disastrous been decision. Yeah. yeah. I... Uh, I yeah. Let's, uh, let's say... Uh, you know, lots of good things about Michael. Really great play. When you watch it, I feel like you're probably going to be impressed. I don't stand by what he did with Gift of the no, Prussian. So I'll that never been stand really by bad. giving it I will up. never, yeah. ever. It, it did not feel like, oh, cool. Yeah, that was worth it. Right, you right. Know? Uh, so let's talk about Isarl. You came in second place. Yeah. Hunter, tell me about your Isarl game. Uh, so I always love playing as Isarl. Um, love it, love it, love it. The action card advantage that you have, I feel like, kind of just scales up with a 14-point game. Yeah. Um, in that, do we want to talk about how we, so we burned through we burned the through entire like action times. card deck three times. Ridiculous. Which we never really burn through it even once no, in most No, usually games. not. Yeah. Um, if which, we do, it's like just before it ends. Yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, we're shuffling, but we're not going to see any of these right, cards. Right, right. And that was nice uh, just to know that, like, I wasn't, saying goodbye to a card right. for forever. Right. I I always had a sabotage, but I played a lot of them. Yeah. So I would I would play them pretty liberally. Um I actually never drew any though. I will say I got almost all of my sabotages through Magian. Yeah. Which Magion. is probably the Magion. I'm sorry. I'm really bad about that. Magion implants. Um like literally guys, that's the whole point of them. Because yeah. everybody, if if anybody gets a sabotage, they keep it. Right. So, then so you someone's just, gonna have a sabotage. You in just their hand. pick whoever. You pick. Right. What, you start with your neighbors, do them, get their sabotages, yeah. then get everybody else's sabotages, <laughs> and there you go. Now That's you what Magion is. You just re, re- call it sabotage. Implants. You might as well just call it steal sabotages because it's a two. <laughs> it's a two pronged thing. You want to have a sabotage, but you also don't want your opponents to have a sabotage. It's like two action cards. So, um, I would say that that tech felt really good in a 14 point game and i don't know if i would say that that tech is always worth it in a 10 point game right mostly because i mean i just knew it was going to be worth it this time because you're going to do it you did it so many times i got got to do everybody i did everybody you never did you never you said you were going to do it to me Oh, I just thought I did it to you. No, you I think didn't. I did somebody else twice then. That's I think by crazy. the time you were going to do it to me, I had like two action cards left. That's what I became it was. a bad target. Yeah, I asked you how many you had, and I was like, ah, oh, it's not worth it. Yep. But um, also, like, I don't know. I mean, it's you guys know what's so great about this tech. I just want to say that, like, it's a little bit daunting in a 10 point game to be like, all right, I'm going to go all the way down one color yep. and have this, and that's great. Um, but in a 14 point game you know it's going to be useful. Right. So, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. it was it was I think uh an even better tech in that setting. You you had a w- crazy early game play too. You you like took both equidistant systems and that scored you four hazardous planets. Yeah, so I was you able to luckily get... got four hazardous planets as your starting secret objective. I was able to get that out of the way um and you know, if if you watch the stream, it might look like 
I was trying for something really aggressive. Yeah. Um, it, it felt aggressive. It felt like you were being crazy. It, it's weird that people it interpreted backfired that on way. you in, instantly. It too. did backfire on me instantly. But the thing was, in my head, I was like, they know that I'm not Holding living this. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we, that was the thing definitely. that I didn't get. I thought, because I thought, the way I thought about it was like, oh, I'm going to get this now yep. while I can. Right. And while they can't stop me. But, um, not all the players, I feel like, thought of it that way. Um, so, yeah, there are some really early fights, like round two, the mm-hmm. beginning of round two. I just immediately the, start getting the punished. The gloves came off. Yeah, I, I got um, attacked at both spots and hurt badly. Yeah, it wasn't just you, though. I think this game is defined by, like, the crazy amounts of early aggression we all had. Right. There, and there, it was because... There was a lot of it. Uh, I think Laura is the one who kept stating this. It, is, it was because of the map. We had right. all the equidistant systems were the best systems in the game. Yeah. And so it meant we had to dig into each other to, yeah. to get anything of value. We just had to fight each other. It's just weird. I mean, I I think I would have had a very... I don't even know if I would have won if if all of that early aggression hadn't happened, though, because it yeah. made me play very differently in the mid-game. Um, but... There were like people were making comments that I had never like filled out my whole slice. Yeah. And it's mostly because that's exactly what I wanted to do. Right. And I did not get to do that. Right. It at a certain point in the game. Yeah. Mostly because I I got attacked and I had to retreat. Right. Um, It either got exploded or I had to retreat. So, yeah, early game was really rough for me. And that's if you're looking to see when I'm acting really cringy and being really mean, it's definitely (laughs) in the the early early game. game. Yeah. Uh, But that's something else to talk about with 14 point games is like. You can come There's back. room for that. Right. And, and and that was something I was kind of anticipating, and I don't think I capitalized on it as much as I should have, which is like, I, I thought 14 points were going to go one of two ways. Either the people that like rush and get the 10 points, it's you're just going to see them keep going, and it's just, okay, right. what are you going to do? Right. People that, that they snowball out of control, and you can't stop them. Or the opposite, which is, the play the the playing field can get leveled very easily because there's lots more time to deal with stuff and you can see comebacks in a much bigger way. Right. And I think I'm leaning towards the latter. I think you see more comebacks in a 14 point yep. game. It depends on the game, of course, but I I think generally speaking, we all had crazy early games and it felt like it settled out by the middle. Mid would you game. describe what happened with me as a comeback? Because I feel like I would. Like my early game is it's it's really I think rough. You, if you I go think, back and watch it. I don't think the end game has anything necessarily to do with that, but I think like your mid game was coming back from that right. crazy. Like by round five, it was like, oh, Hunter had made a comeback. Right. Like and then beyond that, it's like, okay, now we're just playing a regular game. Right. But like going from your round two to your round five was a comeback. Right. Like that there's time to like get hurt. And then slow down. Right. Because normally round five is the end of the game. Right. So, like, I would say in a 10-point game, you really, if you don't score in a round, you probably can't fix that. You probably lost that game. Right. Like, I don't think you won in most cases. You're going to have to pull off some really weird, like, you know, either an Imperial Rider or get some weird agenda phase VP, something outside of the norm. Right. Um, That is if you're playing with, obviously, like, people that are playing competitive and that, you know, know how to play. but. Like, I I didn't score a round, and yeah. I, I missed well, it by initiative. Here's And here's the thought there, too, is the reason it's okay to not score in a 14-point game is because when you get into those stage two objectives, it's very common for those to be hard to get. Right. And so sometimes they take a couple rounds to get, which uh-huh. means you can score single point objectives in those later rounds when you're like also still gearing up for a stage two. So like there's always time to come back to those stage one objectives. By the end of the game, we all had almost every single stage one objective claimed and we all had a bunch of secret objectives claimed. Like all it came down to was who can get any of these stage two objectives. I, I actually want to contradict you a little bit because if you go back, I actually did not score a lot of those stage one. You didn't. Piece. Well, you did I, do. You were the first one to do all three of your secret objectives. Right. That's I did. Sure. I did that. I got ahead on those. Um, and then I kind of started saving up for the two pointers right and because i scored two two pointers i think that's true and i was on my way to score my third right that's six that would have been right the game there. your third the, the game would have been your third two yeah pointer. the game would have been well my third. so then the point is either either one or the other works yeah right you you can score the single points later or you can just invest in knowing you're going to try to get a stage two right and re- but the point being 
there's going to be a round you probably don't score in a 14 point mm-hmm. game. It's probably fine. You should always be trying to score, but not in in a 10 point game. I'm like religious about like, nope, I got to do something. I got to right. do whatever it takes right. because if I don't, I'm in trouble. In a 14 point game, like don't stretch your neck out too far right. because it can it can not work out for you. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about my game real quick because I think my game's pretty quick to cover. Um, Necrovirus I picked because. Uh, it was a weird timing thing of just like my two neighbors had picked their factions before me and I saw that one of them was Nalu and I was like Neuroglave is pretty cool and I saw the other one was Barony Aletnev and I was like non-Euclidean shielding is pretty cool I'd like to have both of those right and I I got Neuroglave eventually but here's my I, I didn't do great I did okay I had a couple rounds where I just straight up made mistakes, and I think those are what cost me the game. And it's specifically because I had bad rounds in the mid game, and that is when Necro is required to capitalize on all their advantages. Mm -hmm. Necro is good in the mid game, um, but when these other factions get all their superpowers running, when the when the Neuroglave engine is running at full speed, it's too late. And that that kept being my problem is like Nalu just keeps foresighting and Neuroglaving, and well, let's talk about foresight in general as an anti-necro. It's thing. the worst. It's very. It's impossible. You shouldn't even consider. You it. shouldn't go after yeah, neuro. It's not worth it. as necro. I'd never thought about that before. I'm sure you yeah. brought it up on the podcast. It's before. not I've worth been like, it. Yeah, get it. You're not. You're not going to get it from them. I mean, it, I, it just I got blew it. Blew my mind. I got it out of an agenda. Yeah, you did and not. That's, get and that's it the what right you have. Way. That's how you have to consider it. Is right. like, nope. You you're not going to get it. You're not going to get any tech off of them. So you're probably not going to get hybrid crystal fighter two either. The other thing that's kind of weird though about like Necro and Nalu um, as like a thing together is that I felt like, so I felt like you were like, I'm, I'm going after Neuroglave, but you weren't planning to have Neuroglave. Neuroglave is yeah, I not. I didn't have a setup to like, I didn't have a right. gum. Like, well, I, actually at the time I was kind of spread out. So I thought it was going to work out. Yeah. I just felt like you weren't really ready to capitalize on that. And I think in general though, for Necro, if you get too, it's almost like, if you've got that tech like in your eye mm-hmm. that you want so bad, I feel like it caused you to lose sight of some other things. Yep. I definitely so lost sight. That. I should have early on seen that Nalu was just going to be a problem for me, and I should have done deals because Michael's yeah. the kind. Michael's the kind of guy who will deal with you. He's too. a deal boy. I could. He and I could have easily done a support for the throne for a support yep. for the throne, yep. and I don't normally condone that, but like. I am not going to be able to go into his space. So if I can give him incentive to not come into mine as right. well, let's do that because I, I I won't win. I won't win against Nalu. Well, and you had a lot of conflict. I mean, there was a lot of conflict in this game in general. Yeah. But there was a lot of conflict between you and Michael and you and Laura. Right. And the problem with Laura was kind of the, the same issue, which was Laura had non-Euclidean shielding, Duranium Arbor, and her flagship. And that flagship's ridiculous in conjunction with non-Euclidean shielding, that flagship is completely ridiculous. Right, right. She, at one point, she had a damaged flagship and a damaged dreadnought, and I, it was untouchable. I was right. never going to win a fight with all this. Like, I would have had to bring... Wh- I didn't have enough stuff. I think I had two dreadnoughts that were fully, like, ready to go, but it still would not have been enough to kill one damaged flagship and one damaged dreadnought. I also think you played them a little too scrappy. Necro. Probably. I feel like they're a, a very point like, game. slow moving kind of like, well, not very slow, not like Arborex slow, but like because of how the finickiness of that um, like flagship, um, that you play that advantage yeah. very slowly. And you played it very loosey goosey. Like I played you, it loosey goosey, but I, I will say this much. I mean, there was a point in the game where, and you were commenting on this too, like I had a pretty solid slice. Now I had plenty of mistakes because there was one round that I didn't spend any money. Right. I didn't spend any of my planets. I didn't have enough. I, I jacked up my command counter economy for one round, and it left me unable to produce any ships. Ooh. And that so that was one round of like losing steam, and that cost me. I didn't even know a lot. that. Yeah, that, that's yeah. I, I there was that like sucks. eight resources I didn't spend one whole round. Dang, it was very bad. Um, and okay, well maybe Necro is actually great. <laughs> maybe I just we just bungled. don't know. Maybe no, I I, I messed up a n- numerous plays because there was that one point too where I said I could have scored six points this round and I yeah. messed up one play. So can you walk me through that? Do you remember that very well? Yeah, I uh, was I could have taken Mechatol, mm-hmm. played Imperial, so that's one point. Right. Uh, I 
needed to kill a flagship. Doug's flagship was sitting above Megatol. Right, did right. that. That's the one that I did get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bombard the last ground force on a planet. Oh, my there God. There was only one ground force on Megatol. Oh, my God. So that's three. Uh, and then there was a two-point objective at the time that I could have gotten. Uh, I forget exactly what it was. Okay. But one of the two pointers, that was five. Uh, and, and you had Imperial. That should be said. Imperial was the this point, is the first point I counted. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, like, I had, you Imperial, had the Imperial already. strategy card. So what he's yeah. saying is that he was going to do this. It was going to be like a swing round. Right. I was going to take Mechatol and then the next turn flip it for three points of Imperial. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. Mechatol plus the two. And then I had uh, spend eight resources. So wow. it was a stage two that I was going to claim wow. when I flipped Imperial, wow. and then a stage one. So it was six points that I I did. It was probably pan out. oh, it was probably uh, the Dorito one. The uh, it was that's what it was. Counter command one. counters. Yeah, because you had a bunch. So yep. yeah, that makes sense. Wow, that would have been completely insane. But I, I just bungled the whole what, thing. What bungled it? I don't even remember. Um, PDS. PDS fire. PDS. No, it wasn't even PDS fire. It was the fact that there was PDS. There was one PDS of- and. I had to, he got a really good lucky roll, so I had to kill more ground forces than I wanted to. Oh. I would have tried to take the Mechatol Rex anyways, but I, to keep enough ships around, I had to kill off a bunch of my ground forces. So I was left right. with only one instead of like four or three or something. Oh, I see. Okay, so I couldn't, okay. I didn't have enough ground forces to take Mechatol. Right. And then I also couldn't bombard. What sucked, what was dumb about the play is I could have, um, I had the action card to destroy that PDS, but I need. I thought I needed to do a timing attack because I thought Doug was sniffing me out and and was uh, predicting. I he, yeah, I thought yeah. he was going to jump on me first, so I tried to get the jump on him and didn't. Just didn't pay close enough attention to like the PDS right. and just how many right. things I needed to bring and yeah. Uh, so I scored one point that round when I should have scored six. I mean, I don't know how much. There's there's probably a fair amount of there, no actually what am I even saying there's a lot of misplay yeah in the, in the stream. stream there's oh, yes. a lot especially early on everybody well it's just constant but early on there's a lot there's a lot um and it's embarrassing I would say this is in a lot of ways our most embarrassing stream. yeah probably um except for the horrible stupid thing Connor did with classified documents. right now that That's the is most embarrassing really thing embarrassing ever. oh my god <laughs> confusing. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's talk about. I think Sardak Nor Con- confusing legal Smith, <laughs> Con- Connor fusing legal Connor Smith. Confusing legal uh, Smith. Let's talk about what happened to the Sardak Nor. You have a better take on this because you were sitting by. Right. Him. So well. So let's give. So Doug was playing Sardak Nor. Yep. Um. Always loved Doug. Uh. Great player gets gets stuck on interesting ideas. Yeah, yeah. A lot. He gets hung but up I, on a thing I, he wants but, but to accomplish. Regardless, so always a joy to play with. Right. Um, what was really impressive about uh, this game was he kind of overcame the Sardak Tech right. thing like, pretty really quickly. Fast. Yeah. Like, Round two it, or three, he took Tech twice. He took tw- Tech twice, uh, which I think I, I think that's a way to do it. I mean, that'll do it. Right. You, you that'll, will catch do, up. You'll, that'll do, pig. You'll that'll do, pig. And he was able to manage things like really well. Yeah. Uh, in order to do that, I mean, and it, that's hard with Sardak right. to actually have well, that's enough four, money to that's, do that. That's six resources each round. Mm-hmm. You're not spending on ships that Sardak could be using to do stuff. He played with the flagship a lot, um, yeah. and I don't know how much the flagship helped him. I don't know how I feel about the flagship yeah. in general. Well, especially in a 14 point game, I wonder if your money is best spent elsewhere. Well, see, I don't know what what else would you be spending it on. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, Fighters. I guess, yeah, a maybe, maybe, a, maybe a higher fighter count. I don't know. It's hard. I feel like Sardak is a hard faction. Exactly. I don't think, uh, I think there are some, what's like a weird choice we could maybe throw out as like something that maybe we disagree with that he. Uh, that Exo Trireme 2. Yeah, I don't want to make it just sound like, he didn't, oh, like it's really hard. He but. didn't, he didn't get Exo Trireme 2 at all. Yeah. Um, and I think that would, I don't know if I specifically, like me personally, I don't know if I criticize that, but I could see that being, I know a lot of people out there think Exo Trireme 2 is like the bread and butter of Sardak Nor, right. he, and he, he didn't play, he didn't it. play that, he didn't play Exo Trireme 2 right. Sardak Nor, he played Advanced Fighter uh, Sardak Nor. Now, I feel weird about Exo Trireme a little bit personally. Me too. I feel like in his situation, I'm not sure he had the money to back that up. Yeah. So like, what's scary about Exo Trireme is that I mean, it's kind of this, it's kind of the yin problem, right? Are you really uh, going to sacrifice a? Are dreadnought? you really going to sacrifice a dreadnought? I think that's what Doug kind of kept saying too. Every time I was like, "Man, you haven't gotten Exo Trireme yet," and he's like, "What? What am I going to use it on?" Right. I think we would Barony probably have is to my break answer down to that. His, he he he's the only one who could have. He's the only one who could have stopped, uh, stopped Barony. The thing is, though, 
I really don't know if he had the money to be blowing up his dreadnoughts. That's no, the thing. He never not. really had all of them out. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's like, if we looked back at his slice or like how his economy was doing, oh, here's, here's essentially what I'm trying to say is that we're really impressed with how Doug was able to manage overcoming the tech problem. Yeah. But I think in the end, even if you're playing Sardak Nor really well and overcoming the tech problem, you're just going to come up short. Yeah. You just spend so much money. Well, he was, he was doing great. And, and then into like the mid game, he and I had basically a similar problem. His tanked worse than mine because Sardak is a worse faction than Necro. Right. I think both of us played well. I made more mistakes than Doug did, but Doug was playing the faction that doesn't have anything to do in the late game. Right. There's nowhere to go with the Sardak Nor. With, Na- with Nalu Collective, you get Neuroglave and you do these crazy things. With Barony Aletnev, you get non Euclidean shielding. You have these crazy powerhouses. Right. There isn't any finality. To the Sardak Nor, you just continue to have plus one, right? And yeah, just that just that plus one doesn't really hang in there that well in the late game. Yeah. I'm tempted to. Uh, I think we probably should make. We probably should say this at some point in this recording. We have only played one game, so yeah, I mean, yeah. if you hear, we're, we're we're making judgment calls we're, that we're, we're not. We're so we're very judgy people. Uh, yeah. But like this, you're get what you're getting is like this A is hot our take. Yeah, this is our hot take after just playing. But I think that Sardak is even worse in fourteen. Probably, I had hoped that they might the be late better. Game yeah. extending the late game is not going to be good for Sardak. Right. They're bad early. They're bad late. Yep. They're bad middle. I thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that would do okay because I thought because it goes later, you have more time to get tech that you need, and so then it equalizes itself out. But the problem is you don't you don't to be a good fourteen point game, you literally need a late game superpower. Right. You have to have one right. to stand a chance because there's going to be at least one faction at the table that does have a late game superpower, and they're going to crush you. If you don't have one, yeah, because that's the thing is like everybody got all their stuff out there eventually. Yep, you know what and I mean. And like, that's that is when I felt powerless. Right, I felt really great, and then when Nalu and Barony were fully online and they were sandwiching me, I felt completely trapped. I could not attack either of them at all, and I I don't like I literally mean I couldn't attack Nalu because they would retreat every single time. Right, and every fight I had access to with Barony and Letnev was unwinnable. Just think about it like this: if everybody has like everybody's limited by plastic, right? So just imagine everybody's got like all their dreadnoughts out there or whatever. They've got that. Everybody's got a lot of everything. Uh, probably not war suns are out. Maybe that would have been the route to go. Maybe. Actually, I don't know. Maybe in a 14 point game, war sun is more viable. Probably that's actually probably true. Now that I hear myself say it, it kind of makes true. sense, but, um, what's going to make the difference? Uh, you have plus one combat or 10 action cards. Right. Or plus one combat, or you can soak a million hits yeah, and exactly. recharge them. What is going to make the difference? The same kind of goes for Necro. Like Exactly. I don't have anything. I didn't have anything to clinch on. You didn't on. have anything like well, that. Well, I think what you have to do with Necro, and this is what I guess I... I don't know how I could have fixed this, but I think with Necro, maybe you do hinge on making those game-breaking combos. Yeah. You got to figure out where you send your two faction tech because it's like yeah if like the thing people we had mentioned at one point was like ooh exo trireme two and non-euclidean shielding that's kind of an interesting like soak two hits then yeah. kill the dreadnought right. anyways to right. blow up two ships like that's pretty cool that's really cool i think you have i i wonder if in a 14 point game you have to look for those game breaking combos because that's going to be your only out in the late game yeah but it's got to work and you got to be able to get it so exactly like, it's, that's it's, the problem that yeah. i ran into so if i like i got latani 2 eventually right i got latani 2 right. off of arborek if i could have done some sort of combo with latani 2 you know, Latani 2 and Neuroglave is what I had. That's a combo. The problem is I didn't get them until way too late. Right. But, like, if if I could have clinched those earlier and had a pie slice set up where I was planning to take advantage of Latani 2 and Neuroglave, that's a pretty good game, right? I mean, talking right. about gumming up the works, I send ground forces wherever I want, build out of them, then go gum up more works. Like, I'm just constantly on the move yeah. and putting stuff everywhere. That could have been a huge powerhouse, but I I didn't push for it hard well enough. also like with necro you're you don't really have that much control over the timing of when you get exactly that's, that's how problem. it felt that's how the game felt is uh, and i've said this before about necro you get the tech that you get along the way to your other objectives right it's too hard it's too impossible to like make a point of attacking someone for tech for an objective yeah so that's what i'm saying is that like i i hear i hear you like there are these combos out there that you can go after 
But I think if you obsess over them or like you put them too much dangerous. Yeah, I think it gets dangerous. Yeah. Because like at the end of the day, you got to play. That's why I just say it should just all revolve around the flagship. Yeah. Because the more you try, which is why I got it out early. So let's talk about that. Right. I, I did it round one i i got a bunch of money round one it It was was like i'm gonna drop it out there why not let's see if i can my goal was let me use it to take stuff i mean i'm just gonna like keep moving a good Mm -hmm. fleet of ground forces and like one dreadnought one flagship and whatever else i can carry around and like i'll take whatever planets i want with that right and it worked for a while i mean for the first four rounds of the game like i didn't lose that flagship and i every time i invaded a planet i took it there was definitely a point where it was like broken as far as if it's it's effectiveness on the board because it was like literally no one had the fleet to deal with that wherever you were going to go it was going to work yeah but the problem is then it runs out exactly so that's why and i I wasn't prepared for that I think ultimately for Necro, you do have to play defensive with that flagship yep. at first yep. because you need to be building up, building the up. You need to have machine. a bunch of infantry yep. so that by the time it's a thing, no one will be able to outpace it. Right. That you can soak so many hits that right. it doesn't matter that, you know, Laura has non-Euclidean. Right. You know, I'll just fight through it with my many, many ground right, forces. Right, right. So, and and also, I feel like there's there's a kind of wobbliness to Necro. I mean, we we saw it this game. Yeah. That like having that flagship stay on the defense for a minute uh, uh, as a kind of just like, no, this is my slice. Yep. And you're not coming into my slice. Almost like extra at first, right. just striking out, just making these little surg- surgical strikes to get a tech here and there. Right, right, right. I think that's the way you got to do. And that's how I always try and play him. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean I agree. I want to give him another go because um, I I felt like that was a teaser for me on Necro. Right. Right. Um, let's talk about Barony. Uh, I was sitting to the left of Laura. She was to my right, and she also played a great game. I mean, she I don't know how soon she had non Euclidean, but it was pretty fast, and she was playing very objective focused. She was like in the running for third place, I think, with me. Yeah, her and yeah. I were like tied for yeah. third yeah. in the end. Uh, and again, what it really came down to is she felt like an impenetrable force for everybody that was near her. Yeah. Like she, I, I will say she probably didn't, she didn't have access to enough stuff to actually get her to the victory points. She Like she had to stretch pretty far towards the end there to get the things that she needed. And that was kind of her downfall was like, just like not the greatest objectives for her right. and her game state. Right. Um, but like you, it, can't be overstated that like you couldn't attack laura yeah unless you brought a ton of action cards and like all of your fleet with you you had to you had to send everything in when you attacked laura it was the only way out yeah i mean there were times where laura would just have like two dreadnoughts sitting next to my basically my entire fleet i wish i'd been extra that game yeah that would have been awesome being i almost picked him being in that position between Nalu and Barony as just an ex child that's just like, that what do crazy. I care? My PDS will chew through everything. See, and that's another reason I really, I th- really think you should have played a really defensive yep. Necro. Yeah, I, th- I think you would have, I think you would have seen it come out a lot differently. Right. Because I think there just would have been a point, like if you had just hung in with the VPs, there just would have been a point where like, oh, we need to stop Matt. Oh wait, we can't. There's nothing. Yeah, I well, wish that's what I, stop. that's what I thought at one point I was gonna have, and then I like screwed up one round, and then it just like turned on a dime yeah a lot of this a lot of the things i'm saying right now are kind of just because we're living in this universe where you didn't do that five point swing right like i would have been at nine i would have been at nine points on round five and that's why you shouldn't even listen to this show because we're (laughs) just having hot takes based off one experience if you had done that i maybe would be like whoa no necro can do anything (laughs) right you're impossible to stop um but yeah barony was like super impressive i will say though again this is like i've criticized myself for playing this way with barony yeah and i see I don't know why this is how it goes down. I think there's like so many things you have to do as Barony tech wise, or you feel like there's so much you got to get done. Right. Uh, not enough infantry again. Yeah, no, she didn't always. She always, she capitalized on capital ships. Right. And right. then never had, and the not even, to not even up. enough. So that's the thing either. is if you can get through those really impossible to take out fleets, there's nothing else there. You're going to get the planets. I think there's a, a kind of barony problem of like kind of being like your eyes are too big or something. I don't know. You have so like, much money to start with and you start with great tech that leads to great tech. It is that. It's like I can just get everything. Right, right. And I it, see the superpower then, so clearly. And that's the thing though. Like it, 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 it basically works because 
she was terrifying. Yeah, it was like, horrible. It was really difficult, but she didn't have those little supporting things. Yep. I just wonder, I mean, I just feel like if she'd had a little more infantry, a little more fighters, it might have just been like, we Doomed. we can't do anything. Right. Yeah, but maybe there's no room for that. I don't yeah, know. It's I don't hard know. to say. I feel like the... I feel like she had to play pretty on point to get all of that right. tech. Yeah. That's a lot of tech. It is. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so we got one last faction, and that's Arborek. Arborek's going to be a hard one to talk about because Arborek had a tough game, had a rough go at it. Yeah. Uh, started with not arguably the worst pie slice. We all agreed For on sure it beforehand. We tried to make a pretty balanced map, but we all agreed that like this one pie slice is the worst one, and that's the one Arborek fell into. They didn't even pick it. It, it happened to them. Um, and it forced them into basically like they had two paths that they were allowed to go because right. they had a supernova and like a nebula and they were just kind of sandwiched in between. Mm-hmm. So it's just like you either go towards Nalu or you go towards Asarl. And he chose to go towards Asarl, but like it's Asarl, so Asarl always has action cards. Basically, Hunter and Arbrek butted heads for the first three or four rounds. And that's where I'm mean. And that's where Hunter's really mean to Arbrek. We, we do eventually trade support for the thrones. Yes, yeah, that's when you guys called it off. Right. And because it was literally just going to cause yeah. us both to lose. But we, we at the stream pointed this out. We kind of pointed it out. He, he didn't get uh, Sarween tools round one. Uh, and that cost him. I mean, that, that was. You, you know, really have to because you, you have such just, a difficult. You have a hard. Game. You have a hard first round that you have to make up for with Sarween tools. You just I, I straight mean, up have to. I personally think that like and I feel like maybe you don't agree, Matt. But like, I think if we had seen that Arborek make a play for Mechatol. It would have been a very different. Oh game. no, I In don't general, disagree with that all, at all. all no, top to bottom. I I, 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 I don't know when he had an amazing opportunity for that because he didn't have a great. I don't path think he ever to really Mechatol. had an amazing opportunity because there's a there was just, an empty space between him and Mechatol, right. and it was a, like a tricky direction to get there. Um, but I do think if he had decided to just gun for it and then establish a thing there, that yeah, it could have worked. He did. Out for I him. mean, I, he did pick like Neural over Sarween, right. I believe. Round right, one. That's that true. was like kind of what happened. Yeah. Um, but so I mean, like he had the action cards. I I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's hard I, to say. I felt like there had to have been an opening for something like that. And honestly, the amount of ground forces he had, I'm not sure how anybody would have stopped him right. for a lot of the game. I'm not yeah, really yeah. sure how that would have. His planets were generally untakeable. Right. Um. So I don't know. Uh. I would say kind of a kind of a weird read on our brand. Yeah, like, I can't. I, really I can't say much think. about how their 14 point game was go because his engine didn't get to kick off in the way you would hope to see an Arborex engine kick off. Yeah, um, I think so, so. I will say this much, though. I think we could make a judgment of just, like, seeing how the superpowers are what make it. Like, seeing how Neuroglave is a huge, important tech. And, like, knowing that, you know, um, E-Res siphons with the Jolnar, where you gain trade goods for getting attacked. Like, that, that is the kind of stuff that makes you ridiculously good. Right, right. And I don't think Arborex has that. Yeah. Like, yes, Arborex is going to have a big snowball fleet, but you don't have any, like, tricks. What is your trick as Arborex yeah, that, like, no makes trick. you win a 14-point game? I don't think it's there. That's what, I mean, anytime, anytime that's what you're saying, my head always goes to Mechatol Rex. That's yeah, the whole just, reason then that Mechatol you just Rex need to, is in the you game. You need to take Mechatol and hold it and take Imperial every time you can. Right. And that's how you make up for the fact that you don't have tricks. Yeah. I mean, your trick is... That is just that is being is that you're gonna hold Mechatol you better Mechatol than anybody. Rex, yeah, you can immediately make it yours for probably a long time, right. if maybe not ever. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how that goes in the future. Um, we're gonna have a play of the week about the Arborek at the it's, end of this yeah. episode. They did something very interesting. That was uh, funny. so let's. I think this is kind. Of, do you have any other like wrap up points uh, got, you want to talk about? A, one or two more things okay. I want to mention. Um, the agenda phase, especially early oh on, my gosh. was lit. Yeah. Completely lit. It we, was... Let's break it down that the the very specific one that was absolutely Which off one? the chain. Which one? The one where... With all the riders or mutiny? <laughs> oh, man. Those were two separate agenda yeah, phases. Yeah, those were two separate ah! agenda phases, you dingus. Okay. Well, okay. So just we had one agenda... That was a completely inconsequential PDS related agenda. Right. That had seven writers played on it. Almost all writers. Seven including of the eight writers were your played. Your boy right here playing Imperial Rider and, and I it. got it. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Only the, it became like two a people writer could vote. meta game. It did. Where it, nobody was even reading the it agenda. It didn't matter. Anymore. The agenda it didn't matter. It just mattered what how you were playing your your writers because everybody was throwing them down. Yep. And then 
everybody was just playing off of the writer that was just played. Right. And I was just so lucky because Doug threw politics writer right. down. And it was going to move speaker. Like, and it was it, the far. whole vote came down to Michael, the Nalu player. And because Doug was on the other side of the map, the speaker token was too much. Right. That was and too then, high a price. I saw that and then immediately got Imperial Rider yep. down. And then I was like, I, they're actually going to give it to me. Right. And they did. And it well, was Well, and great. you two were bros. Yeah, we were bros, but that, I don't think that really influenced it that much. I no, think it, it didn't. was just it didn't. like it was he the did speaker not token. Want to it couldn't be, go. Yeah, because I was that speaker way. that round, so he was either going second or it was going to make him go fourth. Right, and that was not what he could stand yeah, for. Yeah, and I believe he had Mechatol Rex at the time. He did, that yeah. was the whole thing. Was like he wanted. Um, but the other agenda phase that was completely ridiculous was, was the first agenda was mutiny, which you put in there right someone put no mutiny i in. didn't put it in there no no, no. this was du- this was double blind that's right this yeah. is our double blind agenda yeah. phase nobody knew what was coming out we got a mutiny that right. had a few writers of its own uh, a couple writers i don't and remember then... them being really of much of consequence because what ended up happening was everybody was trying to micromanage putting in the fewest this is amount I always of votes. Say about mutiny right i tried but, to tell i tried to warn everybody right i mean i tried to warn them too like i didn't want to get to do what i got to do yeah i really didn't like i'm i'm not i'm not trying to troll anybody i'm not trying to make like the game more obnoxious or right. more difficult for people but the way that mutiny works is the way that it works so what they did was i was speaker and they tried to micromanage putting in as uh, just enough votes i guess to 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 make just it where barely I could swing you. it. Yep. And then I would just like, obviously I would just vote for and get the point. Right. And I was, would be more than happy to do it. Uh, but then we got to the player right before me and that player didn't want to do it that way. Well, or because the thing they, happened. They, so the they, crazy they, thing happened. They had a... They had an action card. They had so, an action card. So Ben card. voted one. Right. Nalu was like, you know what? I actually don't want any part of this. I will abstain, despite I could be just getting a free victory point out of this. Oh, okay. I remember Mike what abstained, the play was. Then Ben voted one, and everyone was like, Ben, if you vote two, Hunter can't do anything about it. And Ben was like, I don't care. I'm going to vote one. So he voted one. And for, then Hunter. And then I voted all against. Right. And then he he used his action card that spend, allowed him to spend a trade good for a vote. Right. So it was like the way he was going to do it was it was a way to cut me out. He wanted the, you to right. He wanted you to vote against. Right. But so I was that, a, a you weren't going to get a point. The problem was that I was a sorry. Right. So I had a sabotage. And so you course. sabotaged the thing. And then I got to do it, and I they all lost a point. Right. So so Nalu, no, not Nalu, Arborek, uh, Barony, and uh, Sardak Nor all lost, all lost a, a point, point. Yeah. Uh, to the mutiny, and then. The next the agenda, next immediate agenda, yeah. next agenda that we drew was Shard of the Throat. Right. Which, honestly, so this is the thing I was going to say with Mutiny. The thing I, I I said early on about Mutiny that I think is always true, you just shouldn't even, don't even play the game. Don't play the like, okay, well, let's try to plan out that we'll do it this way. It's like, nope, you just got to start voting. Right. Mutiny is one of those agendas. You just got to start voting on it. Right, because, because order is the only thing that matters. Exactly. So, like... Just, you got to see where the votes lie. Like right. you just got to you got to choose a, a I random mean, be amount. Smart. Look look at how many everybody's right. got. Do but the, don't do try to don't try to like make deals to get people to vote a certain amount. Just be like I'm voting 5-4 and then like plan to make those deals on those last two yeah. people. The last two people are the only two that matter. I don't think that the problem the, the nature of the agenda is not negotiable. Right. The so first like, four people are gambling, right. and then the last two get to make some decisions. Well, but and also I think you can kind of, like just just use context clues. Like right. if you and the and the person like let's say you're the first vote, and then the, you and the second vote both have a lot of influence, and you're both like lower in the pack. You can probably safely vote a yeah. lot and get it. And you get know what it. I mean? Like just right. just look at the don't try and don't listen to what they're saying. Yeah. The problem is you're playing we were playing with Doug much. and yeah. Doug always is looking to make a buck. Right. Which like in most agendas, yeah, you should be sure. doing you that. You should always but try. But mutiny, make a buck. it just doesn't it does not work. It doesn't make sense. You can't sense. play that game with mutiny. So then Shard of the Throne, Shard of the Throne I almost think is the opposite, especially in the timing of it. This was like round five, probably, maybe mm-hmm. four. I don't know, so, somewhere in the middle of the game where it's like, we have a long ways to go. Right. Shard of the Throne is meaningless right now. Right. That point is nothing. Yeah. We're going I mean, to have lots more fights. So in my, like my. something in the end. I but. mean, it was, it, it was easy to be necro in those, both of those agendas because it's just like, well, cool, let's see what happens. I, it's not going to affect me either way. Uh, and then they voted for me for Shard of the Throne anyways. But then it's like, I don't care. You're going to attack me and then someone else will have it. So right. whatever. Yeah. Like, Shard of the Throne is the weirdest 
agenda. Yeah, Shard of the Throne was kind of like, it seemed really exciting at the time that we were having such a buck wild like yeah. agenda phase. I mean, it did lead to the victory. Like, that's it what did. It, it, but it's it what, always was going to. We right. Just don't exactly. Know where you don't know where it's going to end up. Yeah. It's, it's a jack in the box. Yeah. And I think that's even true of a 10 point game if it comes out like first. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. It's not going to be, you might as well just you know, flip a coin or right. something. That's like, what I think about it. It's just like, vote for anybody. I don't care. Man, it would have been cool if when we went down the agenda, and maybe we should, this would be an excuse to go through all the agenda cards again, uh, to just throw out like, here's the one you should really talk about a lot, and here's the ones like, like, don't, vote. don't bother. Yeah, yeah. Like, why are you talking so much about it? I mean, obviously, a Shard of the Throne is going to decide the game. Yeah, talk, talk about, about it. it. But like... Round th- three? Yeah. Is, it doesn't no, matter. Oh, there's no point wasting time yeah. on that. Well... I think this is where we're going to wrap it up for yeah. our for talking about our first 14 point game. I definitely suggest you watch that stream. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely crazy. It's way too I mean it's crazy long. It's a 14 point game. Right. And I don't I'm not going to be editing it down cuz I'm trying to edit the Gen Con video still. Right. So don't expect it to ever get edited down, but it's it's worth a it's worth a look if even just to skim through it, just kind of see how things shake out. Try to find those agenda phases, especially if you can and, watch the agenda phases. That's and do me some a favor. Uh, if you watch it and you find me to be annoying, um, tweet at me and tell me that I was annoying. And Hunter that I wants to be you. punished. He needs and, to be internet spanked. And that I should stop doing that. I should stop acting <laughs> like that. Just tweet me like, just tweet at me with like an emoji of like uh, someone shrugging and going like, what you're 28. You? Like, <laughs> You're 28. You're 28 years old and you're still doing you're too that. too old to act like that. <sighs> I wish I was Zen. Yeah. I wish I was. I Or like what's fun, like one of the reasons that I think I love playing with like our friends is that. The meanness is okay. Well, is that they have to be my They're friend. They're going to be your friend at the end like of the day. Like they have to be, they have to continue being my yeah. friend. Ben doesn't have to be your friend and you were very He mean does not him. have to be my friend. <laughs> and I'm sure he, I'm doesn't sure he's very much of an happy interest. about that freedom that he has basically <laughs> to not be my friend, which is a bummer. Right. But, but you know, like Sean, I can just, you we know, can, I, all I, can, I do is scream at Sean. Right, That's my right. entire relationship with Sean. I can be Sean. so upset at Sean and he cannot stop being my friend. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's he, literally he is, impossible. He is fueled by our anger. Well, that's true, too. He also enjoys it. I mean, I'm just saying that if for some reason he didn't enjoy it, he has no choice. He doesn't, it at doesn't this matter. Point. Yeah. Well, you if you opt out of a friendship of like over 10 yeah. years, did you know that? <laughs> you don't get you to have out. to be friends forever. Right. Uh, if you want to be our friends, <laughs> you should follow us on Twitter. Yeah, check at out the Space Twitter. Cats Pod. Space Cats Pod, a game updates. You can see, I mean, we posted about this game. We, we Normally, if we're not streaming a game, we try to make posts about the game we're currently playing so you can see little snapshots of games. So we're always trying to keep that up to date. Uh, you can go to our Facebook, Space Cats Peace Turtles, and for announcements, and, announcements and ask me questions. You can go to the Twilight Imperium subreddit to see posts about each episode and join in on the discussion. You can also discuss episodes with us on Board Game Geek on our board game geek guild that's linked in the uh, reddit posts and in different profiles we have out there there's also a calendar that was up to date except for because we did this episode the way we did it i broke it we broke the calendar we just again. felt inspired okay yeah we just felt inspired <laughs> uh you can email us at space cats peace turtles at gmail.com send us plays of the week and this imperium life submissions those are in-game moments that are crazy things that happen like the one we're going to read at the end of this uh which was submitted by us because we're <laughs> narcissists um also, we have a Patreon. It's getting retooled, um, but it's something we're still constantly working on, and want uh, we would love you to you know donate to that, even just like a dollar, one dollar to the Patreon helps. If every single one of our listeners subscribed to this show on Patreon, Hunter and I could like do this full time. Well, you could, you would probably like at that point. Honestly, you should expect more shows. Yeah, in general. Well, exactly. Yeah. Which is you know that's sort of that's, the direction we would love to go. That's in. definitely down. Uh, definitely down the way. Um, yeah, I think the Patreon in general, uh, it's, I, we, we realize it's still old. It's still set to yeah, like yeah. pre Gen Con. Stuff. We're about two weeks away from me being right. a free so man. When Matt is free, we are going to record a new, uh, a new pitch. Yep. Uh, we have a completely new direction to take the show or the, sorry, the Patreon. Patreon. The show is going to stay mostly the same. Right. Um, the Patreon is going to have a different focus that is yeah. almost separate from the show or not separate. I would say it's complimentary. Yeah. To complimentary. The show. And um, we're really excited about unveiling it. We just had to wait so long because we have not literally had the time to, to just sit down right. and record the video and do our pitch. Yep. And I'm really excited to pitch it to you yeah, guys. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, also join our Discord. Uh, that's going to be linked in the Twilight Imperium uh, Reddit posts. But our Patreon is where we just are constantly talking and there's lots of memes. And you also get your Patreon benefits.
episodes there. So that's where we talk about Galactic Council episodes and things like that. Uh, please rate us on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, or any podcast app of your choice. Uh, it increases our ratings and it increases our visibility on the app. So if you want more people to know about Twilight Imperium, give us a rating. Hunter is a stand-up comedian in Portland, Oregon. Hunter, you have some shows coming up? Uh, yeah, so you can check out tonight because if this is going up on TI up Tuesday. On Tuesday yep. So tonight in Portland at Kelly's Olympian, uh, you can see me and fellow comedians Mila Patel and Kyle George perform in our sketch comedy troupe called The Love Boys. We are like a um, relationship advice uh, style of show. And uh, actually, I'm going to throw in something kind of weird and unplanned here. Um, um, Milan probably won't ca- care that I'm announcing this here because I'm sure none of you know who he is. Uh, but um, Milan, my co-writer, uh, is actually going to be moving off to sunny Los Angeles, Los Angeles. Uh, soon because he is very, very funny, and he's going to take that to. The he's going to make it. He's going to take that to Mr. Hollywood, and he's going to say, "Cash me, please." <laughs> um, and so, because of that, we are actually talking about possibly starting to do Love Boys as a podcast. If we're going to do that, though, we're going to need a lot of users that are interested in asking us questions. Um, these should relate to like relationship or dating advice questions, or like possibly even of the carnal nature, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you have any questions like that and you want to tweet them or maybe email them to us, uh, I would really appreciate it kind of just for me. Um, much like how when we did the board game, uh, when we were talking about doing that uh, other board game podcast about yeah, which we suggestions, never, which we never did. Uh, I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm eventually going to release what we did do. With yeah, it. so we did. It do It didn't a lot. pan out, but but it, we didn't love the idea that we were right. going for. But I think we will show you guys what we worked on for a while. But yeah, uh, if you just feel like asking me uh, any relationship advice questions between now and whenever. Um, shoot them, shoot them that way. Uh, maybe hashtag love boys to make it like easier if you're right. using Twitter or whatever. Yep. Um, but I would really appreciate that. And I think we probably will, uh, about a month or two down the road, actually start looking at doing love boys as a podcast. Um, that of course would be a comedy show and not a show about plastic and cardboard like this one, but this show is kind of a comedy show too. Whew, that was a lot. Sorry. A lot. Um, the next Another show you could see uh, on September 8th at The Lamp uh, is Yokes and Jokes, which I'm actually co-hosting with Milan Patel, which I was just talking about. Um, So you can come see both of us do our thing, not as the Love Boys, but just hosting a show. And that's at The Lamp, which is the bar connected to the Aladdin Theater, and that starts at 11.30 a.m. because it's a brunch show, you dingus. (laughs) Uh, I want to thank our patrons, Jim Bob, Jodapake, the cartographer of chaos in Mac We Trust, the uh, Seth Vitetto, Space Pope FN Dragon and Norman Ma. Norman Ma. And so then today to close out the show, we have a play of the week from the game today that we played. Yeah. So if you watch the stream, you already know the play of the week. Uh oh. Um, honey, you want to read it or you want me to? I'll read it. Okay. Um, so Nalu, uh, who is played by Michael, and Isarl, who is played by your boy, <laughs> are going for the win. And Shard of the Throne has been passed around multiple times already. Arborek has had a rough game that has left them in second to last place, but Arborek at the end of the round took Shard of the Throne. So essentially, Arborek has Shard of the Throne, and that might decide this whole game, and spoilers, it does. Yeah. In an effort to prevent the leaders from acquiring the Shard, the Arborek falls on their own sword, and when redistributing command tokens, removed all tokens from fleet supply, and immediately all of his ships on the board were lost... And all that was remaining are a handful of planets with giant stacks of ground forces. Never mind what happened later when Nalu took it. It was an amazing gambit, and everyone else can shut up. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Holy cow. Uh, like, it was it's perplexing. The, it's, one of the, it's perplexing, but it's also one of the only factions that can like get away with that and the timing of it. Like His whole thing was just like, well, I'm just not going to... I'm going to do everything I can to not let someone get this easy point. Right. Because Shard of the Throne is kind of an easy point, depending right. on where it is. And especially with his fleet makeup, it was like, I have like a destroyer and a carrier here and a right. dreadnought over right. there. It's like, I'm going to be It was a lot meat. of smaller plastic, yeah. Like but what I do have like are that. planets that are going to be very difficult to right. win an entire combat on. Right. And so he was just like, I'm not going to win. 
I, there, there's absolutely no way. So let's just make this more difficult. Right. And it was it ended up being a great thing. I mean, right, it was, it was right. super awesome. And Nalu, if, Nalu, if Nalu had Nalu to build had... up a huge fleet to be able to take one planet off the Arboretum. Right. And if, uh, I think Nalu even did it with the assist of a action card. I can't remember. Probably, which one it I don't was, remember though. either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, w- Nalu like did have to work for it. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it's it it was uh, it was really cra- it was probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Yeah, someone definitely do one of the craziest things I've ever seen in late game TI. It doesn't make any sense for themselves, but like we're literally talking about not just like a, a last round in terms of oh someone might win this round. It's like no 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 no. This is the last round of the game. There won't be an objective reveal. Right. We will end the game. The game Imperium Rex will happen. Right. Right. There's nothing else I can do, and I'm at like six or seven points. Right. To 14. It's not going to happen. Right. So what else do I do? Right. And that was, I think, the coolest thing he could have done. Yeah. So that's it. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. What a fun thing. Yeah. And now it's 2.30 a.m. it's 2.30. Got to go to bed. I just want to say sorry one more time. <laughs> for the um, being so me. And uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you for listening to Space Cat's Peace Turtles, and thanks to Ben Prunty for the use of his music. You can find more at benpruntymusic.com and benprunty.bandcamp.com. Pax Magnifica, Bellum Gloriosum.